Hi, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a neck and scalp massage for the lovely Lauren and we're going to go ahead and get started. Whenever my clients are face up, I'm pretty intentional about like no sudden movements um, just because um, you know you're feeling more exposed face up. I'm just always moving a little bit slower. Sometimes I'll even just like um, slightly, you know, brush the hair and it can feel really soothing for the scalp. This is actually really good for the nervous system. Helps to calm the nerves in the scalp. And always when I'm doing a massage, it's like, um, you want to blend each technique with the next, so you don't want to pick a technique that's like, you know, a whole lot different. It's like painting a picture where one thing leads to the next. And whenever I'm doing scalp massage, I'm just careful not to pull the hair in a way that's gonna hurt. I like to do just little circles. This is really good for the nerves and the soft tissue along the scalp. I know some therapists prefer to a quicker um, movement of the hands, but I like to work fairly slow. And when in doubt, just slow it way down. Especially if you're working on someone for the first time. But you know, massage is definitely an art form when you really think about it. So there's all kinds of just subtle ways that you can make the massage um, tie together or just be more interesting. I never really understood the therapist who would get into like ruts for long periods of time as far as like feeling bored just because there's so many um, facets of doing massage that you can really grow more fully into. And just doing little circles. I like to work this soft tissue on as much of the scalp as I can. I like to work around the ears. And this is one of my favorite moves, just to cup the ears with these two fingers and then these two fingers underneath. Just bring the hands up, feels really nice. While I'm thinking about it, I'd like to thank a few of our patrons. I'd like to thank Glenn Davis, Tony Kent, and Arthur3000. Thank you guys very much for your support. This is one of my favorite parts of doing scalp massage is just brushing over that hairline. It was really nice. I'm starting to work my way into the forehead a little bit. And 
and I'm going to go ahead and do some work along the muscles, the forehead, and the temples. I don't really, I don't think I've worked on one person who hasn't enjoyed this pressure along the temples. Feel really nice. Really good for just helping your client relax. One thing you don't want to do when you're working on someone is to like make your client feel bad for, you know, tightness that they have. So you want to like be kind in how you give that information because I find that a lot of people feel like they're doing something wrong if they're tight or and that's just not the case. So you want the work and the information to be encouraging, not like you don't want your client to feel defeated. And this is more for like people that have chronic issues or are dealing with more serious stuff. And you always want to give, you know, the antidote to the tightness. You don't want to just say like, oh man, your traps are, are really tight without um, being able to offer something that will help. They say, who knows if this is true or not, but Pressing the thumbs along the center of the scalp can help balance the right and left hemispheres of the brain. I find that it does help me to feel more balanced when I have it done. Just inching my thumbs down the middle of the and just reverse the process my way back up towards the forehead I honestly haven't really been a huge fan of like working with the ears very much but it can feel really nice to relieve pressure the jaw and the forehead just pulling on the ears a little bit. Be a nice addition to scalp work. And I'm going to go ahead and work my way down the head one last time. Not really going fast or slow. Just finding a good pace. finding creative ways to you know weave things together so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more scalp and start working my way towards the occipital ridge where I can start doing some compressive work along the suboccipitals Just cupping Lauren's head, and I want her to feel nice and stable. Doesn't have to hold her head up at all. I'm just working along this hairline underneath that occipital ridge. And I don't want to go from like super relaxing scalp massage to just deep tissue so I'm really just easing into this work in the neck I also don't want to be overly tentative but trust your instincts when it comes to you know how quick 
quickly you start to go deep. It's a misconception to think that, you know, deep tissue is better. Sometimes it is, but it's not always better. And I'm really just reading the suboccipitals with my finger pads, kind of seeing how things feel from right to left. start with the side that's tighter and just making sure that Lauren's head feels nice and supported the whole time so that she doesn't have to hold her head up at all and usually when I when I change sides or start with one side I'll make sure that I'm holding my chest up and not you know hunching over too much Just always making sure that I can rest my arm on the table because doing this work with a floating arm is going to be a lot harder than it really needs to be. And just working on these suboccipitals. Avoiding um, the places that feel more inflamed. Maybe not avoiding, but just going a little bit lighter, depending on how much inflammation is in there. This deeper work in the suboccipitals in combination with some more um, soothing work on the occipitalis can feel really nice and it's a nice break that you can give yourself as well if your fingers are starting to get tired. Having this muscle um, worked on can feel really soothing as well. It's a superficial muscle, so you don't need to work too hard to find it. This is a really great sequence if you're not wanting to use oil, if you don't have a whole lot of time, but you want to offer something that's effective or some great techniques. should travel down into the SEM, the scalenes, at least a little bit. And I'm going to do that same sequence on this left side, making sure that I'm angling myself so I'm nice and comfortable. Just gradually, if the muscle tissue is opening well, you can go deeper, but if not, just really letting the muscle take the lead. What happens if you um, introduce too much pressure too fast, you actually damage the more superficial, more superficial muscle tissue. And if you've ever had a massage where you feel a certain type of, it's not a good pain, it's like a kind of raw, you know, pain can be damaged to that muscle tissue. It's okay to feel sore after getting a massage, but it, it's a much different sensation. Muscle tissue heals very quickly, so it's not something you need to be like scared of. It's just a 
to be aware of. Just moving back and forth between the suboccipitals and the occipitalis. Deeper work with the, some lighter compressions. Always like to finish with um, some hands-on work on both sides at the same time. Kind of help balance everything out. Go ahead and just cup the head and do some compressive circles underneath that occipital ridge. I think I'm actually going to land on that mastoid process on both sides. Oh, feels like a good way to end. I'm always taking my hands off nice and slow. And that is all for today. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's video, you should check out our Patreon page where you'll find some exclusive content. I look forward to seeing you there. Join us for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness experts.